Hi, this is Nash with Alpha Phi, and this is part two, where we're going to look at the numbers of whether it is still favorable to use a third party line of credit, or whether you wanna switch back to policy loans. We're gonna go over Guardian, post 7702 policies, so newer policies, and also Penn Mutual, because I think most people that, uh, that I work with currently have those two types of policies. All right, so uh, we're reviewing a 30 year old male in good health, and this is our baseline policy. So, um, sorry, need to scroll up here. 50,000 for 10 years, 500K total out of pocket with Guardian. Year one, 83% cash value. So 50,000 goes in, 41, 697 in cash value, and so on. On these longer term policies with Guardian, you can actually juice up the cash value and put even more money in in year one. We didn't do that here, we're just keeping it apples to apples with the other companies just to uh, compare a little bit. So this is the baseline policy, no loans, nothing. And um, we're going to now show a policy loan versus a third party line of credit. So I'm going to scroll down here and I have these frozen so that um, basically we can still see the headers. But what we've got here is still Again, 500K out of pocket on both sides for 10 years. We can see year 10 in year 10, the cash values are identical and the death benefits are identical. That's because they're the same policy. In year 15, on the left, we take a policy loan of $100,000. The uh, fixed interest rate on Guardian is 4.762%. So on 100 grand, it is $4,762. And we're essentially illustrating to be comparable to the line of credit that we're paying that out of pocket. We're not letting it compound on our policy anniversary. So we pay that for five years and then we pay back the loan. So just a quick note, Guardian is direct recognition. So that 100,000 is not going to get the same dividend as the non-loaned funds. It will. Uh, the dividend will go from 5.65 down to uh, 5% at the current rate to match the loan rate, which is a stated 5%, even though we really only pay uh, slightly less. All right, so coming and looking here to show that direct recognition impact since we're, we're on it. So 908 in year 20, age 59, versus 901. So not that much of an impact actually uh, considering the direct recognition treatment. But still, what will put more money in my pocket and where does that threshold cross when the third party line of credit is no longer worth it? So same thing on the right, except with the third party line of credit this time. So the big difference is the interest rate as well as no direct recognition treatment since you're technically not taking a policy loan. So the current uh, prime rate is 4.75. With this much cash value, you'll get a, a WSJ prime minus 1% rate. So your, your CV lock interest rate would be 3.75%. So 100,000 out, 3.75 of 100 grand is 37.50 for five years, then we pay it back and uh, you'll notice that it's still 908 over here in the cash value, that's because there's no direct recognition treatment. So which one's better? Uh, the third party line of credit, we're looking here at the cash values minus that interest. So essentially uh, taking into account all money movement, you have 878 on the left and 889 on the right. So an $11,000 more because of the third party line of credit. Now, let's increase this to see where we hit that crossover threshold in this scenario. So let's go up to five. Nope, still $10,000 more. Let's go up to six. Still $5,000 more. Let's go up to seven. Now that we're tweaking prime, the rate is 1% less than that. Okay, prime at 7%, the CV lock is almost the same. You have 114 more dollars in, in this scenario, uh, and I think it was 6.01, 6.02, yeah, about six point, or uh, prime of 7.02 would give us a CV lock rate of 6.02 and essentially would have 
basically the same amount of money. Now this is with Guardian uh, taking into account their direct recognition treatment. So uh, quite a long ways to go actually uh, for it to be worth it. Now that we've looked at that, let's look at, okay, so this is kind of the magic of IBC. So we're taking a loan against a hundred grand and we have essentially this interest obligation. That's kind of a lot, right? So if you look over here, this number is summing up that interest obligation. So $6,000 at a WSJ prime rate of seven, a CV lock interest rate of six, because it's prime minus one, would be $30,000. Okay, well, in as your snowballs rolling in this policy, you're starting with you know um, 687,000 uh, before you take a loan out. Uh, how much is actually growing over the same time frame? So uh, basically, 700. Let's just take uh, from year 15, 720,000, and you're not putting any more in at this point. You're just uh, taking a loan, repaying the loan, and that's it. So. 187,000 of growth going on in your policy over the same time frame. So of course, uh, if we take a hundred thousand dollar loan and pay it back, we want to, you know, as investors, put this money into somewhere that's going to make a lot more than thirty thousand dollars to cover the debt obligation, and then we can pay back that principal and keep uh, building money with the with the gains or that arbitrage. But also. In the policy, you've made an additional 187,000. So this really is the power of infinite banking. Uh, this is obviously uh, one scenario. There could be millions of scenarios of, of uh, opportunities to access the liquidity in your policy. Hi, I just wanted to remind everybody, these scenarios are very specific to your, your policy and your situation. So make sure to ask your financial advisor if you have any questions or concerns because they can help you model this out for your specific situation. Thanks. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Also, you can learn more at alphacrusaders.com at the link at the end of this video.